Hello and welcome to another timeless gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Junt Midrange, which is one of my all-time favorite color pairs and also happens to be doing quite well according to the early stats on the untapped website. And we also get to play with Tarmogoyf, a card that has kind of fallen out of favor in the recent years but seems to have found a nice home in this Junt Midrange deck in Timeless. And then the deck pretty much builds itself. We've got Orcish Bowmasters as another pillar in the format, great at punishing various card draw spells like Brainstorm and Treasure Cruise while dealing with one toughness creatures. We've got some of the best one mana creatures with Dragon's Rage Channeler, which is also very good at filling the graveyard through Surveil to help grow Tarmogoyf and eventually give itself flying as well. And then a Ragavan, of course, if it gets to connect, we've got some removal spells to try and clear a path for it, can also be very effective. And then Deathrite Shaman with the eight fetch lands in our deck and the many fetch lands in opposing decks can also help us generate extra mana. We can uh, exile instants and sorceries to drain the opponent for two, maybe try and burn them out, especially in combination with our Lightning Bolt. And then we've got the green ability to exile creatures, so we can maybe exile an Uro to prevent the opponent from escaping it. And then we are playing Lightning Bolt over Unholy Heat. Lightning Bolt a bit more aggressive, but won't be able to deal with larger creatures. But we do have Fatal Push to make up for it, which blue-red decks, for instance, don't have access to necessarily. And then we've got 8 fetch lands to easily enable Revolt, as well as Mishra's Bauble, which is another great Revolt enabler, and also an artifact to go to the graveyard. Can also enable the uh, Surveil on Dragon's Rage Channeler, and helps to grow Tarmogoyf, so that's another natural inclusion. And it's also a 0-mana artifact we can immediately get back once we play Lurus, after first putting it in our hand. So this is yet another Lurus deck, as you can uh, expect to face quite often in the format. And then uh, the final piece of the puzzle is Questing Druid, which has some nice overlap with uh, Junt Callers. Can use the Adventure to provide a bit of card advantage without actually drawing cards, so it's not going to trigger opposing copies of Bowmasters, which is relevant, and then can be another threat later in the game that will grow with every spell we cast except for Bauble and uh, Tarmogoyf, which is green. And then our mana base needs a lot of fetch lands if we want to enable our Deathrite Shaman and add land to the graveyard for Channeler and Tarmogoyf. So I've got all eight of the Junt colored fetch lands, could potentially play some off color ones as well, but that might be a bit overkill. And then I've got two of each shock land, since we are milling a decent amount in this deck with a Channeler, so I wouldn't want to be without one specific shock land, but you could potentially trim the numbers slightly and then play more fast lands if you're worried about opposing burn decks, for instance then uh, not dealing yourself a bunch of damage is worth it, since this is not a Death Shadow deck that actively wants to lower its life total, so Black Cleave Cliffs on turn 1 is perfect for casting our Thoughtseize as a nice discard spell, or maybe Fatal Push, while also casting all our red 1-drops, and then Death Rite is still black, so Black Red Dual Land is kind of ideal on turn 1, but we still want to have enough green sources for questing Druid and Tarmogoyf, and the ability on Death Rite, so I'm also playing a Copper Line Gorge, and then we have one of each basic Forest and Swamp, no mountain. Part of the reason is that playing around Blood Moon doesn't require basic mountain, so this way we can fetch a swamp or a forest accordingly. So these give us a less painful option compared to the shock lands if we sacrifice our fetch land, so that can also come into play when facing aggressive decks or if we're low on life, since we are dealing ourselves a bit of damage to with the Thoughtseize of course, which by the way is also kind of a decision point. Do we run Thoughtseize or do we maybe run a split with Inquisition or Kozilek? The main reason to run Thoughtseize is that we can take some key 4-drops like the One Ring or Omnath, and there's some other examples, whereas Inquisition might fall short, but that's also something you could address in the sideboard if you're playing best of three. You could have additional copies of Inquisition of Kozilek or maybe Duress to take away the One Ring, and then of course we could have a card like the Unholy Heat as another one-man removal spell if we need more. We could run some other impactful creatures in case uh, the graveyard gets taken out, then Tarmogoyf and Channeler might not be too exciting, but then we can fall back on some other plan. Uh, cards like the Lantern can also be pretty effective, as we can also recur it with Lurus. So there's a lot of options for the sideboard, but we'll be running this in best of one to get a wider range of matchups instead. So yeah, let's uh, jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper. Turn one Ragavan. Or Lightning Bolt if we need to answer an opposing creature. Put on blue whites with a Sea Chrome Coast. Okay, can maybe have a look at their deck before deciding on what to play here, but I imagine it's going to be Ragavan. Hallowed Fountain coming up, so seems like blue white control. 
So I wouldn't be surprised to see a Swords to Plowshares. A Fragment Reality instead. Okay, a Ragavan answered. Get to draw of Bobble. Our opponent's gonna brainstorm a response. So they must have a fetch land in hand then. Although they'll still take their draw step, so a bit of a weird timing. Okay. I'm not opposed to main phasing a bowmasters to make sure it resolves. Could also go for Seek the Beast to provide a bit of card advantage. Now Deathrite also an option. Could also keep up Bowmasters to respond to a Brainstorm. Maybe the awkward timing was to play around Bowmasters, although they could have taken a draw step first. Either way, um, yeah, Seek the Beast, end of turn, untap, and then maybe uh, cast some spells if we hit a Thought Seize, that would be nice. Field of Ruin. We've got a few basics we can find at least. A Bobble and a Bowmeister's, pretty nice, and a Thought Seize. So we'll start there. I guess I can Bobble first, see what they've got on top. Which can help inform the Thought Seize decision. Although there's a good chance they end up using Field of Ruin. Fountain coming up. So we can Thought Seize. And make sure Bowmasters resolves. Opponent's gonna memory lapse. Play this before it goes away. And then we can Thought Seize again next turn. Supreme Verdict deals with Bowmaster. Okay, so step one is going to be Thoughtseize, unless we plan to Questing Druid, Thoughtseize, and play Deathrite, which, uh, yeah, might be the preferred play. And then... And what do we want to fetch? Probably Stomping Ground. Opponent just holding a get lost. Okay. And then next turn we can keep a Bowmasters to maybe respond to a uh, Brainstorm. Want to try not to overextend too much into another Supreme Verdict, but also don't want to give them infinite time. There's no Mountain, so only have Forest left. So a third Field of Ruin could be effective. Another questing druid's nice. So do we want to play Tarmogoyf? I think so. And then we can still seek the beast end of turn or play Bowmasters accordingly. And then a death ride could just attack. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. If our opponent's out of removal, they're taking too much damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, a keepable hand. It's going to be a little bit painful with our fetch lanes, but that's what we sign up for. Facing Polluted Delta, no Lurus as companion. So they're going bigger. And gets a Watery Grave for Brainstorm. Not the most effective brainstorm when they cannot shuffle cards away. For now, I'm liking Ragavan. Make them answer it. And then, which colors do we like? Could be a red-green. Although it's not like I'm fetching Swamp here. So let's just stick to black-red. And then turn to probably Channeler plus Deathrite. Right, drown Ragavan. 
And we'll stick to the plan here. Our opponent might be playing with Tainted Pacts. In which case, we should see all one-offs. Never mind, so it's not a Tainted Pact deck if they've got two Brainstorms. I will put an upkeep stop in case I want a Lightning Bolt before taking our draw step. Thoughtseize likely takes Goyf. And a Flood of Strand is going to fetch for a Breeding Pool, so it's a Sultai deck. Still don't hate a Lightning Bolt right now. Try and grow the Channelers so it doesn't die to an opposing Bowmasters. And another Channeler seems welcome. Already have Creature in the Graveyard, so it wouldn't help there. Okay, and then... Can attack for one, play another Channeler. And activate Death Rite, end of turn. Opponent considers to the graveyard. And Inquisition is going to take our Fatal Push, that happens. And they've got their own death right. Okay. So we're just missing one card type here. And in the meantime, we can start draining with our shaman. And get rid of maybe a drown. Snapcaster is a consideration here. Fetch land the draw. So it's just going to be a Lurus in hand to activate Deathrite again. Can fetch a Swamp this time. Alright, we're a bit vulnerable to an opposing Bowmaster. Mishra's Bauble would be one of our better draws to go with Lurus and to enable Channeler. It's going to be an Uro. Okay, so now Deathrite can get rid of Uro before they get to escape it at least. Even if her opponent gains some life back. Yeah, let's just do this now. And then go for... I want to say Overgrown Tomb. Just in case I have a 2-mana removal spell for Death Rites, responding to the fetch might uh, shut that down. Opponent can respond by exiling their own creature with Death Rites. So they gain the life and I don't. But now the coast might be clear for Lurus to get back Let's say a Ragavan. And Thoughtseize would add Sorcery to the Graveyard to enable Channeler. So, let's say we Thoughtseize. These go up to 3 power. 6, 7, 8. So we're too shy of lethal. Still seems kind of worth it here. Not immediately in danger of dying on the way back. And another death right is fine, but we can probably do better. Take and consider. And then death right could add mana to let me go Alurus into Ragavan, I suppose. Instead of activating. Which seems good. And that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing another Alurus deck. And uh, we've got an interesting hand. 
I'm gonna keep, but it's unclear what to do on turn one. Could be Death Rite, could be Channeler plus Bobble, which gives us the best chance of hitting a second land. I think that's what I'll do. Because we can expect one mana removal from the opponents. So we'll get a Blood Crypt. Play Channeler and Bobble. And then I'll keep land on top. Okay, so we can uh, do this now, we can wait. But since we're drawing a land, it's not like we're drawing something our opponent can take away with a discard spell. So our opponent on Grixis, presumably. Watery Grave and pass, so that's likely a fatal push. Which uh, we don't want to have our Tarmogoyf fatal pushed since it can line up better against some of the red removal spells. So instead, uh, it's probably double spell Ragavan Deathrite, because if we dash, it likely gets removed without generating any value. So step one is attack. See if they're inclined to take out the Channeler. Now, Bowmasters is also a concern, and a reason to uh, try and get this up to three toughness. And then, for now, black-green looks good. Play Ragavan. And Deathrite. Alright, so Bowmasters. It's gonna hurt, Ponan did not end up casting a 1-drop. Down to 15. We've got our own Bowmasters to answer their Bowmasters. Attacking with Ragavan into the 1 1 token. Still not ideal. Anyway, we can grow Channeler at instant speed with Bolt and Push. There's a chance we can grow Channeler enough. And then Deathrite adds a mana. So, yeah, it seems pretty obvious that they've got a Bowmaster. I think we just attack with a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Although then they would shoot the Ragavan, try and block the Channeler, so I guess uh, we may as well attack with the Ragavan then. Alright, so there's the Bowmaster. Alright, opponent takes out Ragavan. And then probably wait for them to block. And then we can grow the Channeler. Okay, so against the Grixis, they could have Death Shadow, so I think we hang on to Fatal Push and just bolt the uh, Bowmaster, and that will add instant to the graveyard. And then we can still play a uh, Tarmogoyf if we'd like, although we suspect Fatal Push in their hand. There's also something to be said for just playing uh, a Bowmaster's main phase to punish any brainstorms they might have. But I'll keep up the pressure. Alright, Pono goes digging with Iteration. So despite a pretty effective Bowmaster's, we were able to grow the Channeler. Watergrave is going to be another 2 damage. So they'll be at 13, which is not quite enough to play a Death Shadow. So opponent goes for a Flooded Strand, so they could maybe play a 1-1 one -one Shadow, which still dies to Fatal Push and, I guess, even Bowmasters. Never mind Steam Vents. And a Bolt on Channeler, so Goyf is good to go. And we've got a Bowmasters for added pressure. Don't mind main phasing it to play around a counter spell, which they might have. And then a Death Rite probably just attacks here. Could also activate Death Rite and then get rid of a Lightning Bolt or Iteration. Try and slow down potential Delve spells. But I kind of like the pressure from Bowmasters, so yeah, let's just main phase attack. We've got Fatal Push for Death Shadow, so that's not a huge concern. 
and with another Bowmasters and maybe a death right activation we can try and cross the finish line so there's a shadow of course the opponent could have a stubborn denial to protect it but we'll find out soon enough brainstorm okay opponents playing into the bowmasters maybe they didn't realize or they're out of options either way opponent explodes on to the next one okay we're on the play with uh, promising hands just missing a bit of removal to clear a path for ragavan but um, I'll give it a shot. Could also consider playing Death Rites. And then turn 2. We can dash Ragavan, still Thoughtseize perhaps. That's reasonable. And now we can potentially exile the opponent's fetch land. Blue red. Death Rite down. So dash plus thought seize at the very least. And do we want to play forests? Unlikely to need green next turn. Go with swamp. Okay. Let's have a look. So this might be a phoenix deck. Or just uh, four color good stuff. So, double death ride, aeration, oko, brainstorm. No fetch line to go with the brainstorm, at least. Iteration on turn two, not the best, and they don't actually have the mana to cast death ride. So, they are actually counting on this brainstorm to get their colors sorted. But oko is still gonna be pretty tough to beat with our current setup. So, I think that's what I'll take. Opponent goes for iteration, so just finding one card in the top three, basically. And a uh, Tarmogoyf is nice. So now I just like casting Goyf and Dragovan. Already a 5-6. And we could seek the beast. Try and find more action next turn. Put on brainstorms. Can they find a fetch line to go with it, or are they going to be brainstorm or locked, as it's called? It's going to be breeding pool and a death right. So yeah, no fetch line. Put a lightning bolt for Ragavan. That's okay. Find a channeler. So I think the plan is channeler and then seek the beast in the opponent's turn. Which also represents a uh, Bowmasters for what it's worth. And then we want to get red green, makes sense. And there's Oko. Could Elk the Goyf, could just make a food. Hopefully we can finish off Oko. Another death right. Going for another red black land also makes sense since we typically don't need a lot of green. But we do have a questing druid in hand, it's possible we exile Tarmogoyf here. Well, there it is. Seems like a fine card to exile with questing druid. And there's another Goyf. Well, it's uh, a lot of Goyfs. Wouldn't be able to fly the channeler, unfortunately. At this point, I think we still want to pressure Oko, and then they might chump. I guess if I go face, they're more likely to chump, because they might just be afraid of dying. Alright, Death Rite chumps. And play Double Goyf. And 
the next turn we can maybe work on Lorus getting our stuff back. Although Deathrite will make that a little bit less effective. Time for another iteration, okay. Halfling we don't mind. And they're gonna swap food token with channeler. Okay, that works. And their channeler does have delirium. Still happy to fetch since I'm likely going for questing druids. Put Lurus in hand. And it's not like I need revolt for anything. A bobble. There's a no artifact in graveyard, so that would add a type. Deathrite can only exile creatures, instance, and sorcery, so bobble's safe. So that's actually irrelevant. Okay, play bobble. And then we're still going face. They're gonna hang on to Deathrite, which can gain two. Can have a look at what's incoming. And an Uro, alright, that's good to know about. So Lurus in hand, play Questing Druid. And then, yeah, hope to get there next turn. They don't have the mana to play and escape Uro. Just playing Uro, not that amazing by itself. And then now Lurus, get back, Bobble, could be pretty nice. Ooh, a Bloodbraid Elf, okay. Bonus spinning the wheel for a Molten Impact, taking out Questing Druid. But that's going to be pretty much it for now. Oko, not too scary here. It's going to Elk a Tarmogoyf. And they still seem to be in trouble. That yeah, was an interesting back and forth. But a Tarmogoyf remains a very efficient threat, even if it has fallen out of favor in other formats over time. So, if we attack all out, that should be game. Unless their last card is a removal spell for one mana, which I guess is possible. So just in case, we can Seek the Beast. And then Lurus plus Bobble still available. But we might find a uh, Lightning Bolt or a Fatal Push here. Or a Ragavan which we can dash. So if they have a removal spell as their last card, they could go chump chump, remove Tarmogoyf, take two down to one. We get to enable Ragavan, and then uh, maybe go for Channeler. So it must be a lightning bolt if they're jumping the 6-7 or a brainstorm, all right. And then Molten Impact takes out the 3-3. Three, three. So they're not dead yet. Unless Ragavan hits a lightning bolt. Fetch land. Okay, and then... Uh, yeah, going for Channeler seems fine. Ragavan back to hand. Also could have played another one using the treasure just to keep it on the battlefield, but we can dash it instead. So their opponent's hanging on to dear life. They probably still have an Uro in their hands. It's not like they could shuffle it away with a brainstorm. 
So that's going to gain three. Anyway, they put a land in play. Make a food up to seven. Still dead. And yeah, her opponent finally explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand leaves a lot to be desired. We've got double bobble, double questing druid, so it's not really doing much of anything. Just kind of spinning our wheels and hoping the pieces fall into place. At least bobble with either fetch land or non-fetch land, we can sort of decide whether to keep our top card, but we don't have a one drop, so I think that's a mulligan. Okay, this we can try. Don't have high hopes for Ragavan surviving, but still gonna keep. Put on to running Gigantha. And Bobble. Make that double Bobble. Steam vents. And pass the turn. Yeah, they can take out Ragavan if they want. They did not have a one mana answer. Now a brainstorm. Okay, so Bowmasters. It's going to be pretty effective in the matchup if our opponents are running brainstorm. Just got to time it carefully that they can't take it out in response, but of course they're going to have some removal here as well. Okay, so for now, play a land, attack. And if we're not casting a Bowmasters, we might seek the beast, finding the opponent's Ragavan. Okay, pass it back. It is a nice play pattern that we have multiple two mana instants, making it difficult for the opponent to play around them. Well, let's see if our opponent has removal for Bowmasters. A stern scolding to counter it instead, fair enough. Okay, so they came prepared. Yeah, that's definitely the cleanest solution to a Bowmasters, just uh, countering it. At least we still have our Ragavan. But our opponent's getting to see a lot of cards. And their own Ragavan, okay. That we can bolt. And let's maybe have a look as well here, or we can attack with Ragavan first. That's probably not going to change. Also have the option of just playing Druids without using the Adventure, but it feels like we need the card advantage. Yeah, I guess we'll start with Bolts, since that's happening. Attack. Finding a Spell Pierce. And see, Questing Druid, Spell Pierce, Brainstorm, Oko. Alright, well, they don't have green mana for Oko from the looks of it. But it's still the scariest card. And then it could Spell Pierce my Questing Druid if I seek the Beast end of turn. So that might not be the play. Either way, take Oko. I think I'm fine just taking the two just in case I want to seek the beast. But I don't want to do it now. Put on brainstorms. Yeah, if we had another Bowmasters, that would have been nice. Wouldn't be surprised if they got rid of the Spell Pierce. Breeding pool into Channeler. I think we seek the beast now, so that if they did keep Spell Pierce, they don't get to surveil at least. But um, yeah, it's still a close call. I would imagine they've got their own questing druid that they're planning to use end of turn. So then they have one unknown, which could be the spell pierce. Well, let's try it. Yeah, that worked. Finding bauble and a land. Okay, so no answer to the channeler at the moment. So that can get in the way of Ragavan. Can uh, bobble the opponent, I suppose. 
but we're likely gonna see a spell pierce and then uh, questing druids plus death ride versus put lures back in hand which I'm also not hating at this point all right there's an uro Opponent does have a very full graveyard, so we do want to get Death Rites in play this turn. So maybe it's going to be Lurus plus uh, Death Rites. Unholy Heat hitting Ragavan. It's a little bit surprising. I guess her opponent's... Might have a green source to escape Uro right away. Nope, Questing Druid goes digging. So now they need an answer to Death Right or Uro gets exiled. And they did not find one. But they are getting back on the board. Okay, so if we were to play Lurus, Bowmaster is also quite tempting. And then I could still Death Rite the uh, Uro. I could wait to use Death Rite, since if our opponent has a green source, it's likely coming from a fetch land. And then we can respond to the fetch land by exiling Uro. If they go with a non-fetch land green source, we get punished. So that may not be worth it. Yeah, I think uh, Alora's Bowmasters is fine. And then activate Death Rites on Uro. And then gaining life is also pretty useful here when we're falling pretty low and facing a bunch of flying creatures. Spell Pierce is gone. So we can now punish the Mishra's Bauble as well. And let's just gain the life right now. While we can. Back up to 11. And that's good enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a fetch lane for death rites. So we're not the best at filling the graveyard, but the opponent's often going to help out. So I'll still give this a try, I think. Start with death rites and then turn two. Could run out a small Tarmogoyf or we could end of turn seek the beast. Opponent's going to fetch. Team vents and death right down. Alright, so the graveyards are already starting to fill up. So I'll play my 3 4 Tarmogoyf on turn 2. Alright, Thoughtsees. We could combine with Channeler or we can just attack, play another Goyf, which I'm also liking here. That resolves. And our opponent's going to brainstorm. They've got the fetch land ready to go. And since their opponent's not running any companions, so they might have some impactful 4 drops, which we can try and take away with Thoughtseize next turn. Their own death rites. Can fight over the graveyard with Tarmogoyf a little bit. And a fatal push. Okay, so now Channeler into fatal push is also appealing. What's Deathrite gonna do at the moment? Make extra mana pretty much. So it's possible their hand is more concerning than uh, the Deathrite in play. So sure we'll channel her thoughtsies. They could have a Bowmasters to take out Channeler. Which is fine by me. 
Spell Pierce. That works. Still grows Tarmogoyf. And a Stomping Ground seems like a reasonable draw. Let's make play Goyf and Fatal Push. Adding a land to the graveyard doesn't grow Tarmogoyf. And it also wouldn't grow Channel or so. Opponent's down to five. Okay, so they need some way to stabilize, maybe a one ring. Can stop the beatdown. Another fetch land and a demonic tutor. Okay, so we might get comboed out here. Although it doesn't seem like a uh, tainted pack deck with double polluted delta. They might get some answers to Tarmogoyf, maybe a sweeper, who knows. Down to three, so they are in bolt range, although Deathrite can gain two. And a Bowmasters to answer Channeler. So we can push Deathrite, attack, double chump, add another Tarmogoyf, and hopefully that's good enough. Well, it is satisfying to be beating down with Tarmogoyf in the year 2023. Push one Tarmogoyf, that's fine. And Jarsil, that's okay. So they're pushing a second Goyf, but they're forced to chump. And uh, I think I'm feeling brave, and I'll just seek the beast now. Fetch land channeler. All right, fatal push number three. All goifs are dealt with. But our opponent's on empty. See if we can enable Delirium, that's game, and a fetch land will do exactly that. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we don't have an exciting one mana creature, but we have a decent hand nonetheless. I think we can save ourselves a damage. If our opponent's got a one drop, it might die to our Bowmasters, and Mystic is definitely one of them. So let's have a look first. Our opponent's probably on an elf deck, which does have access to natural order, which can be quite effective. But yeah, double bowmasters is perfect for this matchup. Elite just as a 2 2 is quite sad. And, uh,. Yeah, I don't think we want to bolt the elites. They can natural order next turn. So instead we can uh, seek the beasts. Maybe keep up lightning bolts. And then I suppose we could attack with the uh, 1 1, but it doesn't seem worthwhile. Play the control role. Another elite. Now we can bolt. So they don't get the extra token. A land channeler and another bolt. So now I don't feel too bad bolting the elite. Also stops a natural order. And then we can uh, questing druid as well. And pick up all the counters. Yep, 
Yeah, this was a pretty brutal draw for the mono green deck to face, even if they had a natural order in hand. There's not much they can do about it. Awesome, and we get to rank up to Diamond 2 here. So yeah, I'm happy to report that Junt is alive and well, and doing good things in Timeless, and Tarmogoyf is also back in style, so couldn't be happier about it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.